here's another Gnostic story, the Lucifer Anki story. The monad, the one and only true higher being, the source, is not of or in this world and communicates via messengers. The monad wants the imprisoned spirits of men, which belong to him, back. Hear that? He wants us back. According to Gnosis, all living beings have a spiritual piece of this element within our souls. And this is what they call the spirit of man. And for this reason, the spirits of human beings are in an elevated spiritual state. This very idea is the saving grace of divine knowledge. Knowledge that has come from outside this world. So, here's another Gnostic story, also found at Nagamani in the 1940s. The Gnostic story relates that Lucifer, the light bringer, also known as Enki, was the first messenger from the Monad. It is said that this being, the highest god, unreachable and unknowable, does not attempt to penetrate this limited universe of impure and satanic matter. And according to these myths, he sends messengers of light. According to the Gnostic legends and myths, because the origin of man's spirit is imprisoned in this impure matter called body, the great monad sent an angel of indescribable fire and light to show man the light and help him wake up and see his true origin. The messenger is sent to this world to bring light. The light is called liberating gnosis. Is this the saving knowledge that can wake man up and help him free his imprisoned spirit? This is knowledge that allows him to know who he truly is, how he got here in this world, and what he must do to liberate himself and fulfill his spirit's longings. Because of force, <laughs> because of course, it belongs to another unknowable plane. The light bringer came to this world to wake man up, to help him remember his divine origin. He tried to tell us that the spirit within us is from the divine origin. Gnostics consider the biblical myth of creation can be explained this way. The creator God of this world trapped Adam and Eve in his miserable world. And Lucifer, in the form of a serpent, offered them the forbidden fruit of saving Gnosis. He showed them that the creator was deceiving them. In other words, the creator said to man, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in this day that you eat of it you will surely die. On the other hand, the serpent said, You will not surely die, for your creator knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like the other lesser gods, knowing both good and evil. The Bible continued, and the eyes of both of them were opened. And it doesn't say they both died. It says the eyes of both of them were opened, like the serpent had told him. Later, the Creator says, Now man has become one of us, to know good and evil. And it seems the serpent was telling the truth. The Gnostics call this Creator the Demiurge, a liar and a deceiver. For them, the entire creation is a failed attempt by the Demiurge to imitate the world of the Monad. And so the Gnostics believe that the serpent was sent to be the liberator of man from this world. They say it is wisdom the liberating gnosis that wakes man up and saves him. And of course, the messenger of the monad is an enemy of the god of this world. Gnosis states that creator wants to keep man captive in this limited, inferior, impure sphere. He also forbade man contact with the higher world, represented in the myth by the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But the bringer of light made a great sacrifice and descended into the satanic hell to give the forbidden fruit of knowledge to man. Gnostics consider that before the arrival of the serpent in paradise, man was in a state of ignorance and was blind to his true situation. They maintain that Adam and Eve were in a state of servitude until the serpent opened their eyes. Of course, the Creator threw them out since he wanted them, and still does, to only obey only him. He wants the spirit to stay asleep so that he can take advantage of its energy, preventing it from manifesting itself into this world. The light bringer also has been called the exterminator. But the exterminator of what? Exterminator of matter because he hates this created world of matter and time.
He would behave like a hostile antimatter force, extremely aggressive. This is because he hates all that has been created by this demiurge. He also hates the body and the packaged soul of man. And this is because the imprisoned spark it contains belongs to the monad. And such is one more myth of the Gnostic legend, Lucifer and the Lightbringer. They tell a pretty convincing myth, don't they? But this sure makes more sense to me than the stuff I've been hearing. The Gnostics were certainly ahead of their time. 